Happy New Year and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mary Price. I'm the Events and Marketing Manager at the Shingo Institute at Utah State University. I'm pleased to have Norbert Majerus with us today. Norbert is a Shingle Faculty Fellow and he is author of two books. His most recent book is Winning Innovation and his first book is Lean Driven Innovation, which received the Shingle Publication Award in 2016. Norbert had a long career working with the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and now enjoys helping others combine lean thinking with innovation. If you haven't had a chance to read the article Norbert wrote on the topic we're discussing today, I would encourage you to visit our website, shingo.org, click the media tab and select the blog. You'll find the article there. It's titled, Rethinking What Toyota Taught Us, Tesla, Here We Come. And now we'll turn the time over to Norbert. Thank you, Norbert. Well, thank you, Mary, and a Happy New Year to, uh, to everybody. Um, it looks like at least 60% of the people think innovation is very important. Uh, that's kind of uh, uh, also my opinion, as you may uh, have guessed. But Happy New Year to everybody. And um, uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for joining us uh, uh, today. Um, I uh, got uh, to think about this subject when I read this article, uh, Unleashing What Toyota Taught Us by uh, John McElroy. He, uh, John explains here that um, hey, Tesla seems to run the show on electric vehicles. And uh, he says, we're all looking up to Toyota being the benchmark, uh, industrial benchmark. We'll try to follow Toyota. But what is Toyota teaching us about this subject? And my first uh, thought, of course, was, hey, Tesla, here we come. There will be books written about Tesla and uh, consultants will teach and colleges will teach uh, how Tesla does. Uh, uh, product development, innovation, and um, and uh, uh, so uh, that's why I called it. Hey Tesla, here we come, jumping on the next uh, big uh, big thing. But um, what really got my attention in this uh, article was uh, they quoted this book, the Toyota Product Development System. And uh, this book was written by Jim Morgan and Jeff Leiker. Both Jim and um, uh, Jeff came to Goodyear to help me get started with lean product development. And uh, we based uh, a lot of what we did at Goodyear, by the way, very successful um, lean product uh, development or innovation system, really uh, a lot on this book and on, uh, on uh, what we knew about Toyota. So for me, it was what happened here. Uh, what happened to Toyota? What happened to the other car manufacturers? And the question is asked, did lean really, uh, lean operational excellence really cause this gap? Well, that answer is relatively easy to answer, uh, or that question is relatively easy to answer. Uh, the same thing happened to Kodak, happened to Smith Corona, uh, and many, many others. Kodak uh, in 1974 had a working digital camera, but the digital camera uh, uh, still uh, bankrupted the company. Smith Corona owned a piece of uh, Acer computers, but they decided to stick with their uh, mechanical typewriters. What this really, it's called the innovator's dilemma. It's very well known and uh, it is, I will explain it to you here uh, today because it's a big piece understanding that um, principle is a big piece of what I call a lean culture of innovation. Do we, uh, we need to foster a culture of innovation. Does anybody have an idea how we can do that? Well, you could give us less work and you could stop criticizing every idea that we may have. Well, does anybody have a suggestion that isn't ridiculous? Well, by the way, Dilbert only has nine, only 19 Dilberts on innovation, so it doesn't seem to be a popular subject for Dilbert, but there uh, are 429 on poor leadership behavior. So anyway, why do we have to innovate? And uh, uh, a lot of you uh, think it's important, and uh, I believe it's very important. And in, I'd like to start with uh, Shigeo Shingo here. I remember um, uh, seeing this at the Shingo conference, uh, Shigeo Shingo trying to argue with somebody about why should you do lean? And he got very, after he said the same thing three times, he got very annoyed and he said, well, you only do lean if you want to make money, he said. And if that's not what you want to do, well, then don't even bother. So same with innovation. Uh, if you look at industrial growth, uh, the two key factors for industrial growth is population growth, which 
It still happen in some countries, yeah. But the big one is business growth. And you grow your business by creating value for the customer. We know that. You either do something much better, much cheaper than anybody else. And here's where uh, lean thinking comes in, lean manufacturing. But you can also do something that nobody else has, has in the market. And that's where I think lean innovation comes in. So for me, it is very, very important. And um, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it together with a lean culture that a lot of you already have and that a lot of you are, are, are already working on. And I'm starting with the Shingo uh, principle here. Um, uh, not the, uh, I mean, the Shingo, yeah, the Shingo principles, the, the Shingo model as one good way of creating the lean culture. It may not be the only one, but it's certainly a, a good place to start. And um, pretty much everything that is in this model that's on this page that you ever heard about the lean culture, you can use perfectly to enhance uh, your innovation. And, uh, but I would like to add a few innovation principles to the guiding principles uh, here. And I would also like to stress uh, that um, certain behaviors that uh, we all uh, got accustomed to in, in, uh, in a lean culture may have to change a little bit to, uh, to, um, uh, to accommodate uh, more creative uh, thinking. And there's one thing, uh, the only really thing that uh, sticks out here that we have to think it's the creating value for the customer. And I will explain that to you here in a, in a few minutes, what I mean with that. So for me, the innovation system and, uh, and the culture can be integrated perfectly uh, in a good uh, culture of excellence. And it all starts with education, uh, as you may have guessed, uh, people must learn how innovation works. And here's where we talk about uh, the key uh, principles of innovation. I will uh, show you the most important ones here in, the, in, in a few minutes. But we also have to talk about uh, leadership and uh, behaviors. Leadership behaviors and behaviors uh, by everybody in, a, in an organization. And then uh, people must learn what must be done and also what to expect out of this. And uh, I will uh, talk about principles first, give you a few ideas what these principles are that uh, are important for people uh, to learn. And then we're also going to talk about behaviors, what these behaviors are and what could be uh, major barriers to, um, uh, to get uh, uh, people to change. So key elements of an innovation system, I only show you uh, nine here, there's a lot more, but um, uh, first of all, um, it, uh, it all starts with the goals and strategy. Um, and then I has already mentioned the value for the customer uh, accounting system, just like when you switch to lean uh, manufacturing. Uh, accounting system is very important because um, you will have, uh, you may get a dip in um, uh, in your in your results, especially the ones that uh, that are reported to, uh, uh, to to Wall Street. Uh, creating the business environment is a very big one, and here is where Tesla is really doing the the bulk of the work and really setting the uh, things up for other uh, car manufacturers to follow. And then uh, understand how innovation works, I will talk about uh, evolution and disruptive innovation, the innovation dilemma and uh, the innovation chasm. Uh, enabling innovation. Most companies have found out they don't have to force innovation. They, it can be enabled. Um, it works very well if you do it right. Google, by the way, is fabulous at that. I had the chance to visit Google and really see how uh, that is uh, the, uh, part of their culture. And then uh, focus on strengths and weaknesses and uh, industrial creativity is another big subject. And uh, many, many more uh, today for the sake of time, uh, the, the, we have to limit the, the, the number here. But I want to start with the strategy and the goals. And here is where it goes wrong for a lot of companies here for, uh, straight from the start. 
they talk about innovation. Leadership says we need more innovation. But if you look at uh, their strategy, the Hoshin Canary and everything, you really don't see much of it. So it's very important to have it part of the strategy and to have it goals for it. And um, uh, of course, there are many, many uh, different uh, uh, companies who have many, many different uh, goals. Uh, for starters, a very good goal is uh, 30 or more percent sales from new products uh, or from products that are less than three years old. It worked wonderful at Goodyear. I know 3M and other companies who really have made innovation, uh, their success for their, uh, for their business use very similar um, uh, goals. And then also a goal for disruptive innovation and uh, some companies, 3M, are uh, very good at that. Again, uh, uh, at least 20% of all R&D money are earmarked uh, for disruptive innovation. And they watch very carefully that that money is used for that very purpose. The next thing that uh, I wanna, uh, a part of the education, how innovation works, uh, on this uh, uh, graph, I'm going to plot the project risk versus the project value. Of course, uh, high risk with no uh, value is not where we want to go. So that's uh, blocked out. But then about 80% of industrial innovation happens right here. You have a product and you make it a little better, you make it a little better, you make it a little better. It's called evolutionary innovation. That's where most innovation happens. And by the way, Toyota and other car manufacturers have always been excellent at this piece. Then there is what I call evolutionary um, uh, 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 innovation, uh, where um, you, you just, and I show you here, Honda Civic, I mean, the, the car has evolved over time and it has evolved uh, with creativity to some extent. So there have been, um, hybrid engines uh, uh, offered and, uh, and many, many other accessories. That's what, but it's still the same customer and it's still the same market and it's still the same distribution, the same dealers and everything. But then, and that's about 20% of innovation happens here, but there's only less than 1% of the companies who really go where the big money can be made. And that's, uh, uh, in the, uh, what I call in the breakthrough innovation. And that is high risk, but also very high uh, potential. And um, okay, the next uh, part that I would like to, uh, and I would uh, try to steer uh, uh, here in, in this uh, workshop, give you a few hints, how you can move into this, uh, this area of the, of the, high, uh, uh, of the high value, but also uh, mitigating that risk a little bit. So uh, I mentioned before that one of the things that we should rethink a little bit is uh, uh, creating customer value. There's nothing wrong with lean is about uh, creating value for the customer. So we're not gonna change that. But Henry Ford already knew, he said, if I had asked the customers, what would you want? They would have told me we want faster horses. And um, we all learn, fix the, uh, uh, watch the customer, develop empathy for the customer, uh, fix the problem for the customer. Need is the mother of innovation. And a good example uh, that I like to quote is uh, the biggest um, uh, retreader in the world is Bandek. And the idea that created this company, the Germans in Northern Africa during World War II, uh, when the Allied blocked us supply chain didn't get tires anymore. And they developed a process to, uh, to use a piece of cured rubber, wrap it around a uh, worn tire, cure the whole thing in the hot sand. And uh, the need uh, was what created this. They became very creative because they had a need. Now, I would say that innovation is the mother of need. Very often or more often than uh, uh, today, uh, in today's environment. Innovation comes from a technology, from a technical or business opportunity, not from observing a customer. And a, an example that I like to give you there, this is Art Fry. Art developed um, 
invented the post-it notes, the sticky notes, uh, when he worked at 3M. And Art uh, comes to my workshops and he tells the story. He got the idea when the bookmarks were falling out of his uh, uh, songbook when he was singing in the church choir. Of course, the solution was in the lab. They had developed exactly what he needed. The, the, so he went back in the lab the next day, and uh, within a very short period of time, he had created sticky notes. Well, okay, he solved the personal problem. The, 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 um, the, the, the bookmarks weren't falling out of his book anymore, but then nobody in the company had any interest in looking at his idea. It, it went so bad that Art even quit. And he got called back uh, a few years later, and then he tells the story how it took him five years together with um, uh, the, the, the little support that he had in his company to develop the market for his product. Today, of course, different story. It's a multi-billion dollar market for Korea. It wasn't observing a customer. It was an idea based on uh, some solutions that he already had in the lab. So that thinking we need to bring into um, when we look at, um, at creating value for the customer. It's not just like, where does the customer struggle, but it's also focusing on your strengths. What do you have that you could develop an opportunity uh, uh, in the market for? And I think that's kind of how the electric car came about too. So innovative dilemma, what is it? It's well researched, well documented. Clayton Christensen wrote several books on the on the subject starting in the, the 90s. And it says that successful companies are the least likely to seek with innovation. Uh, Kodak, um, the, 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 the typewriter industry, the car manufacturers, and so on and so on. They invest in what their current customers want even if they want faster horses, as Henry Ford um, told us many, many, many years ago. And here's how it works. Uh, I'm plotting here customer value and growth over time. And you can see the green line, which would be typical for customer demand for the combustion car industry. Uh, yes, there is always new value created, but it is at a relatively comfortable pace. And Toyota was the master of doing this. Every so many years, they launch a perfect quality new vehicle, and they really taught us how to do that. But uh, then the technology sometimes outpaces that customer demand. The opportunities are bigger than the customers even know. Uh, electric uh, car could fit on this uh, on this uh, uh, red line. However, the development cannot be done as uh, at the pace that we are used to. The development has to be done very, very, very quickly. And the development is not just the product. The development is to develop the customer, the market, uh, the, the supply chain, uh, uh, the manufacturing, uh, you name it. And in order to do that at the right pace, the, uh, the learning cycles are much, much shorter. And very often a product gets launched that is not perfect. And we've seen it with Tesla many, many times. We've seen it with iPhones, we've seen it with many other things. Product isn't always perfect. You have to keep developing it while it is in, in the market because that's a part of the learning. The good news is lean startup thinking and agile has shown us how to do it has shown Tesla how to do it and has shown many other companies how to do it. And uh, again, I've been teaching it for more than 10 years. It's, it's known and it works really, really well by me. The other problem is that people need to understand this red uh, line is not a straight line. There is what uh, is very well known again uh, in the innovation and very well published is the chasm. Things take a break. And I think Tesla is taking a break right now. Something isn't ready. I don't know exactly what isn't ready, but something isn't ready right now. And it may be the economy that, uh, that has uh, played, uh, uh, thrown them a curveball. Curve I don't know, but it takes breaks. And patience is what gets us through that. And that patience is very hard to find in companies. 
And uh, uh, many people agree with me on this one, uh, return on investment and when can I get it are the biggest enemies of innovation. So that patience um, uh, is really needed. Talking about the behaviors now very quickly, uh, there are three that I wanna focus on, fear, rewards, and engagement. Uh, Deming has said this a long time ago, drive out fear. And uh, I almost got fired for my first new product that I created. I was told if you do any more work on this, you are out the door. And guess what I did? I stopped it immediately, of course. Well, that's not what makes you successful with innovation. And the reason that happened to me, it's all fear. Leadership had very little to gain with my new idea there and a lot to lose. And they certainly um, didn't like to, um, to stick their neck out and uh, support my, uh, my new idea there. Well, lean, a lean culture helps you tremendously here because the intimidation that was used in my case uh, shouldn't even be there. It's not there when you build your culture on respect, humility, and trust. But I also think the right goals have to be there for the behaviors. At Goody, we always had said courage is being rewarded. Well, I never found out how it was rewarded. So it really has to be built in the, uh, the whole Camry and everything. And then agile is a wonderful tool to, um, to manage that fear. You don't expose yourself to million dollars anymore. You expose yourself to small little learning cycles. And uh, Deming again, innovation comes from people who take joy in their work. Now I'm going all the way back to inherent motivation. And I've been working with a good friend of mine in, uh, in Europe. He is a, an industrial uh, psychologist and actually he taught me uh, this stuff. Autonomy, expertise, and purpose are really what drives uh, creativity, uh, what drives motivation in an office, in an environment of, uh, of uh, higher, uh, of people with higher education. And uh, to me, uh, that is what makes the idea submission system uh, work. And I, uh, that inherent motivation, and let me give you one great example here of a company uh, they do dialysis and um, a new president came in and he saw an organization with extremely high turnover, terrible morale. The dialysis patients are deadly sick and they are not very motivated. They come in um, uh, and uh, it, um, uh, they are not cooperative. The nurses, it's a messy job. It was a really big problem in this company, morale, and the turnover was uh, in, the, in the 50, 60 percent uh, range every year. It was terrible. All this president did is he created a suggestion system, very, very well organized, and he, created, he called it an innovation system, and very well organized, uh, by the way. And uh, now people started to, instead of quitting or um, talking to their colleagues, they submitted an idea for improvement. And then uh, uh, they were talked to, they were engaged in even implementing this improvement. Within a year, a year and a half, they saw tremendous results. And I witnessed this, by the way, I went to, they are part of our consortium in, uh, in Ohio. And um, I, I was amazed what this company got out of engaging people uh, the right way uh, in rather than complaining, taking ownership of the problem, trying to help, trying to um, get engaged in, uh, in making uh, uh, this a better company, making this a better work environment. So um, this and many other behaviors um, uh, play a role, but as you can see, we are building on a culture, on a lean culture that is already there or that, uh, uh, that is in the process of being created. But I have to finish here with one other key comment, is lean killing innovation? Uh, the answer for me is clearly no, because I did it many times. But there's one thing that it could do if you don't pay attention. It's what I call feeding the guard. 
there are people who make a career in enforcing rules and um, uh, it, especially in a command and control. Uh, people love rules and people love to uh, uh, to 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 police rules and and so on and many people especially in an um, in an environment with command and control have made a great career out of this so um, that is something that has to be managed the, the 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 right way that you don't create all these standards and that they help um, uh, uh, they help promote the command and control uh, organization. Other for that, as I hope I got that message through, Lean can really help you with a culture of, uh, of innovation. So for me, the conclusion, uh, no unlearning needed, nothing wrong with what we learned from Toyota. It works and it works well. In an, um, I spent my whole career in innovation uh, at Goodyear and uh, uh, helping other companies uh, since. However, Lean also tell us never stop learning. And we can learn an enormous amount from Tesla. We can learn an enormous amount from other startup companies. Let's integrate that into uh, what we are doing uh, in, in our lean culture. Uh, don't, uh, we need to rethink, and I showed you a few examples, customer value and thing, we need to rethink, yeah? not throw them away and start with another, uh, like uh, here's something new coming, let's all jump on this one now. And then integrate the innovation culture with your lean culture. It works very well, and I encourage you to um, to keep that in mind and at least and at least try it. So, I uh, this is a short um, uh, uh, event, so not a lot of time for questions. Uh, but I would encourage you, please start something on LinkedIn. Throw your opinion out there in front of everybody. Tag me for it. I'm on LinkedIn. Tag me for it. And maybe tag the Shingo Institute, tag Mary Price. Let's get the discussion going on social media. That's where it happens anyway these days. So please, somebody volunteer to start it. And we're all going to chime in and we're all going to join in. So thanks again, Mary, for giving me the opportunity to share a few thoughts here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Norbert, for presenting today. Before we go to the Q&A session, I want to mention that you are teaching a workshop on May 22nd on building a lean innovation culture. It's going to be taught at the Shingo 35th uh, conference. It's going to be in Provo, Utah. So please, if you have a chance and you want to learn more about this subject, please go to our website, shingo.org slash events. You can learn more about the conference there. We do have a few questions. Um, let me go ahead and ask the first one. Uh, is the reason why companies don't invest in disruptive innovation because they're so inwardly focused that they miss changes in the business market? Uh, yes, that could also be a reason, but I, um, the, the, the feedback system that, uh, uh, that we are used to does not always include the innovation. Yes, it could be the, it could be the reason. Uh, it could be uh, one of the reasons uh, that they just... Um, all the resources go to launching the product, fighting uh, fires and so on. And there just isn't the time to do proper technology assessment and, um, and scouting, yes. In your experience, is lean thinking, lean leadership philosophy required as a base for innovation? Um, we did innovation uh, many, many, many years ago, 40 years ago when I started my career, I, uh, I worked on innovation at Goody. We were always very, very good at innovation. And uh, I learned it long before even knowing there was. So it can certainly, but a lot of the behaviors that we implemented to promote the innovation or to enable the innovation are now part of a lean culture. And uh, the, the, the nuance that we learned, respect was one that I learned very late in my career, uh, respect and humility, they work wonderful if you want to promote uh, innovation. Okay, thank you. Along the lines of don't throw thoughts away, rethink, do you have any thoughts on data management along those lines? Where do those oh, ideas yeah. go and how do people access them efficiently? Absolutely. Um, actually, it was at the Shingo conference uh, last year where I had several participants in my workshop and they worked for a big data company. 
and they came to learn um, uh, to learn lean, to learn lean, lean culture and so on. Uh, you do need the data. Uh, it's not everything. The, the people are important too, by the way, not, not just the data, the, the culture, everything, but especially in a technical environment, no, maybe not only technical, in, in, in any environment, the data help you tremendously. You do have access to that today. You, you have tools today that, uh, that you never had 10 years ago. Please use them, you, but use them wisely. It's not the only thing you need, but whatever you can use that helps you, uh, it, uh, it's very, very, very valuable. For uh, one example, uh, I spend a lot of uh, time at Goodyear working on JD Power, JD Power data, market survey data. It was very hard for us to understand it, especially engineers who everything is very precise. And now you all of a sudden work with, um, uh, with margins that could be 30, 40 percent. And, uh, but it still made a huge, big difference uh, uh, if you uh, have that data and use it wisely, have access to the data, use it wisely. Okay, thank you. The last question is, do you have a recommendation for a good book on creating <laughs> idea suggestions? <laughs> but, okay, well, uh, thanks for asking that question. Um, if, if I uh, hadn't locked in this title of this book, it would be something uh, to, uh, uh, to merging these two cultures, to make sure that innovation thrives in a lean environment. And I think that was my intent of writing this book, uh, but the title is what it is, but um, uh, I, I, uh, the content is what I talked about today. So uh, that's just one I, but I'm sure uh, this is not the last time you heard about this subject. I think this is uh, something that it, at the last Chingo conference, by the way, at least 50% of the keynotes mentioned that now that we know lean, now we have to focus more on innovation. It was very interesting. Perfect, awesome. Well, that's all that we have time for today. Thank you so much, Norbert, for being with us. I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure that you get registered for the conference. We'd love to see you in person. Shingo.org slash events. We'll take care and we'll see you next time. And thanks again for participating and thanks to the Shingo Institute for giving me the opportunity. Thank you.